You have Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot is rescued on what basis? Not his righteousness, right. but God's kindness. And what I said to myself is, I am not that patient. Mm -hmm. Someone cuts me off in traffic, judgment. Right. My child get on my nerves, judgment. Right. And it's like, I'm more prone to judgment than right. God is. I do think we, we gravitate toward the soft side of God. He's, he's perfect in all of his attributes, but we tend to skew to grace and mercy and yet he is a perfect judge yes. and he does discipline. Yes, he does. Help us understand the juxtaposition that we tend to create between him as a judge and a disciplinarian right. and him as a redeemer. Well, I think we have to ask the question of why is he a judge first? Uh, because, and the answer is ultimately God is holy. In the beginning, God gives a law uh, and because he gives a law now, if those people choose to disobey that law, they are rendered guilty. Mm -hmm. And because they are guilty, there has to be justice. Right. Like it has to be made it's right. Um, and that's, we see that all throughout the Bible, whether it's Sodom and Gomorrah, whether it's uh, Uzzah, who, you know, reached out and grabbed the ark, and he, <laughs> the, it said the and Lord didn't killed him. it seem like that big a deal, did it? It did. You know, like he did, until you study his yeah, background absolutely. and you go, you went to ark carrying school. Yep, you should have you known better. Knew. You should have known yeah, better. Yeah, because you want to go, gosh, you just stumbled. He refused to believe God's word, That's and that was right. a response to it. That's right. Because the way he was handling the ark was, was already off. Right. And I think the problem is, we look at passages like that, and it's like, Lord, he was, the ark was tilted. Right. Falling. He was just yeah. trying to help. Right. And it's like, no, the Bible calls it error. Yeah, and right. so now you're attributing these good things that's to right. what God said is that's evil. Right. Yeah. And so that tells right. me what you think about God. Right. No sin is small when you consider the holiness of God. Right. And so I think one of the mercies of that is a communal mercy because the Israelites observed it. Mm -hmm. And they yeah. saw, oh, wow. Right. God isn't anything to play with. Mm -hmm. And right. you might say, oh, that's just Old Testament. Well, let's move to Acts with Amen. Ananias and Sapphira. Yes. Amen. The church yes. saw, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. God don't yeah. like liars, that's right. especially religious ones mm -hmm. who want to look like yes. they are giving. Yes. And so judgment is a thing. It is a reality, but it is a good thing. When you imagine what would the world be like if God did not care about justice, mm -hmm. if people were able to yeah, break God's it. law and yeah. sin against us and there was no yeah, vengeance done for, for it. Yeah. If, if what happened at Holocaust had no penalty, yeah. if what has happened to us, those of us who have been sexually abused, right. if there was no consequence yeah. for that, right. if all the sins against us had no payment, yeah. right. Yeah. That would be a problem. Be right. Good. But I think that the good news, again, to bring out the gospel, is that the cross is one of the purest, I think, mm -hmm. revelations of the kindness and just, justice of right. God together. Right. Because you have somebody like David who sins and Nathan comes and says, hey, you ain't going to die for this sin. Right. But the question we have to ask is, is that just? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because who's going to pay for it? The, the scripture says that a lamb is insufficient for atonement. Right. And so he could slaughter a bunch of lambs, but That's there's still right. sin that needs to be atoned for. But he's able to say it because he doesn't even know that one day a son is coming who's going to take on that sin on himself. And so God is able to justify. God is able to forgive. God is able to set us free from the penalty of our sins because the penalty will be paid for. Therefore, he was able to atone without compromising his righteousness. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's a beautiful thing. I want to introduce you to an amazing organization that Matt and I just love. It's called Mercy Ships. They're the largest floating civilian hospital in the world, staffed by generous doctors and nurses who donate their time to bring life-saving medical care to those who otherwise would not be able to receive treatment. Their newest ship, the Global Mercy, is joining their fleet, creating urgent need for more volunteers. You don't have to be a doctor or a nurse to serve. There are many other positions on the ship that are desperately needed, including cooks, cleaning teams, and more. It's easy to get involved. Just visit mercyships.org for more information. When I was studying the justice of God, 
I, I saw that God is often bent towards mercy before judgment. Even Genesis 3, Adam and Eve eat from the tree. God has said they was going to die, but at the same time, he covers their shame. And it's like, Wait, but they just sinned against you. You have Egypt, right? God judges Egypt, and somehow Israel is able to escape because God communicates their deliverance by saying, put some blood on the doorpost, therefore the angel of death will pass over. The question we should ask is, did they deserve that? They didn't deserve mercy either. But God chose to show, show mercy. You have Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot is rescued on what basis? Not his righteousness, right. but God's kindness. Mm -hmm. And what I said to myself is, I am not that patient. Mm -hmm. Someone cuts me off in traffic, judgment. Right. My right. child get on my nerves, judgment. Right. And it's like, I'm more prone to judgment than right. God is. hundred percent. Right. <laughs> I think we want some measure of control over somebody else's punishment. Because if you really hurt me, I want you to pay. So I want you to, to recognize the level that you hurt me. I think for us to go, I mean, I mean, God, forget. And we do all this and I'm like, you're still hanging on to control. You are still going. I get to be Judge Junior because I don't think they're really repentant. I think, and this is a question. I, I think an element of our need for justice is because we're image bearers. So we're made in the image of God. And so we recognize that justice is a good thing. Right. Now, good, there's another element where our sin distorts our sin, right. sense of justice. And I wonder if even our unforgiveness is that kind of selfish justice where I'm withholding yeah. mercy yeah. because yeah. I don't want. But now that that. So, this, so what do we do with that? I put then? my Bible, that dog will hunt. That's good. <laughs> I hadn't thought of it that way. And that is so fresh because you're right. As Imago Day, as his image bears, we do bear his thumbprint. And so some of that cognizance of, I mean, I don't know about y'all lately, but I can't watch the news without weeping mm -hmm. just over the, you know, some of the horrors mm -hmm. that we see in the world around us. I see it in my own little corner of the world, but man, you see it amplified with what's gone on recently in culture and it, it grieves me. And I do think we're supposed to be grieved over That's what wounds God's anger. heart. Mm -hmm. Righteous anger, righteous grief. But then if I don't take that, maybe, I don't know if this is even the right metaphor, but take it back as a sacrifice to his throne yeah. and go, I don't yeah. know how to judge. And I don't know what to do with this. Yes. I just want to grieve. And I want that to send me back to you and go, I'm not God. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.